now that the banana build is mostly wrapped up, there's just some little bits and bobs left to go on that. I, uh, I think, I hope that I have enough parts on hand to begin the next build on the bench, which I will admit before I built the Phoenix, I had planned on going from scratch. But then I built the Phoenix, and the fit and finish of the VS410 is next to unbeatable. So, VS410 chassis kit will be the basis. And on to that, I will be bolting TRX4 portaled axles. I realize now you cannot see those. Plastic front and rear and these are the scale and trail variant like Defender and Bronco with their remote lockable diffs so somehow I will be incorporating unlockable diffs on that as well as my favorite the Amazon dig gearbox so this build will be Oh, and also, at least at this point in the mental planning, I would like to do trailing arms from an element. So, oh, got my drive shafts too. And uh, to fit TRX4 drive shafts, I will have to do some lathe work on the outputs on that transmission to get them to work. So, we've got Vanquish for the chassis, Traxxas for the axles, this is uh, intended for an SCX2. And uh, shock towers will also probably be element so that I can fit some 90 millimeter shocks on there because those I have. At the moment, I can't say for sure what shocks will be on there. I have an array to choose from. And, you know, knowing me, uh, might just buy desert lizards and throw those on there because I really like them. And uh, for links, I'm going to start off with something from the bucket. Uh, probably, honestly, probably Axial. These are from a capper. Probably the capper links to get the, the axles kind of roughed into position where I want them. And then I'll be fabricating uh, the rest of the link, the upper and lower links. I don't know if the trailing arms will be usable because the body has already been chosen. A J Concepts tucked will be doing the body. Uh, I think I have a front, a suitable front bumper. Uh, the rear bumper will just be a delete. I won't have a rear bumper. So this will be sort of a, a Daphne-esque build, but with using a lot of different stuff. Um, chassis mounted steering, for sure. Oh, and the uh, recently tested and still homeless uh, J-Concept landmines will be the tires, for sure. Uh, they did so well in the test that I have no doubt they will do wonderfully on this, because... With what I have intended to go on it, uh, this ain't going to be no lightweight. Uh, I can't see it coming in under six pounds in the starting build with with no fancy stuff. I would like to do magnetic body mounts if I can get them to work with with the towers and etc. on the VS410. So I will get this stuff out of the way. And I'll get started getting this chassis together, which I've done before, and it flies together. So that should only take a little bit. Might uh, pop this guy into time-lapse mode and uh, get started on that. I know, I know, I shouldn't be using a Bosch 12-volt driver to put together a chassis. But I'm lazy, and I have it, and I love those... MIP bit inserts, so I'm going to keep doing it this way forever. There's no one here to stop me. As I experienced with the Phoenix, the fit and finish 
on the parts on the VS410 chassis are impeccable. Uh, you just have to pay a little bit of attention. You know, they give you a bunch of 12 millimeter screws and these will only fit a 10, otherwise you're gonna put a screw in inside of your servo. Uh, like, I think it called for eights uh, for the panhard mount, but those should really be 10s, because with 10s, they're perfectly flush to the inside. Uh, and I ran out of eights, so I pulled the eights out of that and moved those over. Other than that, everything seems to have gone together perfectly. Uh, we will see if I need to deal with shock towers. Uh, I was worried because I kept bolting parts on and it got a little wide there in the midsection though I think it's going to need to be. But, I mean, look at that. That's, that's right there. Uh, the bumper I was thinking of using might actually even be too big. But, uh, that, I mean, moving right along. Uh, front body mounts, you know, much as I love the magnets, I might just go regular pins on this one because Vanquish kindly provides you with quite the assortment. I think I'm gonna be using these, the shortest ones here because this, this body's gonna sit pretty low. Um, it will, uh, I will, get to the point where I can see if the trailing arm mounts can be fitted on here because this guy is obviously set up for links in the rear. I mean, it won't be a big loss if I have to go links in the rear. I just thought it would be fun to have element parts on a, I will think of an appropriate portmanteau for this uh, when, when, when I get to it uh, because it's, it's Vanquish. It's Traxxas. It's gonna be, there's gonna be some element on here. I'm almost sure of it. I've got a big old box of it over there. But once again, the fit and finish on Vanquish parts is fantastic. And it will pain me if I have to get rid of this because I think that part looks great. Um, I think the eventuality of it might be that it'll just get cut down because as I've mentioned in the past, these are all I run. So the, the, the straps, I mean, I'm, I'm not throwing, I mean, here's what I have on hand for three S packs and, uh, it, it's too big even for that. Uh, I don't know what you're going to be running. This battery weighs well over a pound. Uh, this guy weighs about, I think he's just a little over four ounces, 100 grams area. So I stick with those little baby 3S for virtually everything. So it might come down to me cutting off, just cut that all the way straight along the top there, cut it off or bend it up here and then just cut one new strap holder for the battery because I really like these and I think I'm going to need some decent anchor points as three servos have to go in here that aren't involved with steering. So I haven't quite 100% figured out how that's going to be. I mean, it could be so simple as fabricating a bracket and mounting one servo here and one servo here, kind of how Traxxas does, and then some sort of a linkage attachment to hook the cables up to. Shouldn't be a problem with the cables being too long or too short. I think they'll fit just fine. But I think next step will be to, I, I think I'm gonna cut the body out and get some potty posts loose from that tree and uh, see how I can set the body on here. And then I'll kind of rough set the axles under it to see where the wheel, I don't care what the wheelbase comes out to. Uh, if I have to, I mean, I'd like to line it up center of the wheel wells, which I'm assuming is 12.3, but if it comes out a little over that due to whatever the links are, that's fine. Uh, cause like I say, I'm not going to mess around with bumpers. This will be kind of an ecto-ish look when it's done. And, uh, that, that's what we're shooting for. But, uh, I'm going to get that body cut out. I know everybody's got a different technique. Uh, some people do the razor scoring method. Uh, I've never been able to successfully do that, so 
It's uh, curved scissors for me. I cut out the four wheel wells first, and I usually cut out along the rockers, and then I cut the front and the back. That's the way I do every body. Doesn't matter what it's for, doesn't matter what kind it is. Wheel wells, rockers, front and back, and that's it. I'll clean it up with a Dremel if I need to. So far, it looks like the only uh, sticky point will be I'm gonna have to take off these little these little decorative guys. Those probably work in somehow with the VS410 Pro and Ultra Bodies. Uh, they kind of flare this thing out a little bit more than I'd like. Kind of pops it out. But I think with that width taken off, unfortunately, yeah, so that is a bit of an issue. The the metal there bolts to this and uh, they're just, they're too wide for this body. This body wants to sit kind of inside those. It's not a huge amount, but I would rather not have the body bowed out like that. I mean, and then if I cut the, if I cut the next line of the rocker off, then the body's not gonna have a lot of support. It'll be up, I think, too high. The shock towers are seeming to line up pretty great with this body. So I'm gonna have to unbolt some bits, see if I can get a little bit better fitment. Uh, I'm assuming they leave this quite long so that you can do whatever you'd like with the front end. Uh, until I get these off, I'm not going to know where the Ford Aft is going to set entirely. I must say, cutting this out is uh, categorically different uh, from doing the XJ that became the banana. This thing is super thin, and this thing is like cutting here. It feels like 080 up here. It is so stiff. This whole thing is so stiff. Which is good, because uh, this guy's not going to really have much in the way of bumpers to protect it. And I think, all in on the paint for this one, and we're going to do a, a base of color change green. And then I'm going to back that with iridescent turquoise. So, I don't know how well that shows, but this thing is going to be the color shiftiest, pearliest thing you've ever seen. Uh, I'm blown away with how well it's going together and how fast it's going together because I haven't gotten to any of the fabrication stuff yet. So for this one, I'm at least going to get these. I'll get the sides pulled off so that I can get the holes drilled for the body mounts or uh, line up and see if I if I can use the magnet mounts. I might as well use the magnet mounts. I have them because uh, then I just have to drill little three millimeter holes in the body and uh, dig through the bins and find that bumper that I was thinking about using for here to see how that will line up with the body in the front. Uh, see if I have anything to use in the rear, seeing as it has it has the regular mounts. So I got to put something back, even if I just make like a flat bar bumper, something to support the back of the body back here. I'm hoping to get the receiver box uh, mounted inside, the receiver mounted in here uh, to help clean up the wiring. Uh, I might actually use the included, whatever this mount is for, it could be for dig. Uh, I'm hoping to use that dig mount as opposed to the transmission mounted dig mount. I can just mount it here and have the horn go this way because I think that'll be super clean. Then I can get speed control here, the two servos here, and I think that'll be I think that'll be super clean. So I'm going to see what is going to have to be done. I'm going to have to pull this whole battery tray piece off because I won't be using. It might be a matter of I had not considered until this moment just cutting this down perhaps along that line right there, just shaving this straight off to see if that is enough clearance because it's not much. It wants to sit 
Well, if I wanted to tuck it in, it would really want to sit where those guys bolt on. So, I'll get these unbolted, uh, try to get this guy set at least, because uh, the next is when it starts slowing down. I don't get the servos for a couple days. I don't have electronics picked out, but I am thinking uh, Copperhead with slate, just like what's in the Phoenix, because that setup is tremendous in the Phoenix. And I might go foolhardy and get a 2850 to, and just put the motor in the Phoenix and then put the 1900 in here because the gear reduction in the little dig gearbox is, is not substantial. Like a 2850 on this would be blisteringly fast. So I don't want it super quick. This is kind of being built kind of as a partner to the Ecto. They'll be sharing the same gearbox. They will definitely go toe to toe in a fight once this guy is done. But uh, to, to try to wrap up this part one of the, the build that I still can't think of a clever name for, uh, I want to get this body set. So I'm going to get to pulling these apart. I honestly think I only left this little bit of time lapse in here for continuity uh, because I've watched it back a few times and I don't think anything's gained or lost if it was here or not. But it's 18 seconds and that time's already passed. So here it is. So the custom works will come out earlier than anticipated. Uh, and will probably be the, 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 the only custom piece built for today. Uh, the body sits a little lower in the front. This is just straight down on the magnets, which happen to perfectly, as they should, uh, line up with the holes in the shock mounts. So I can mount the rear all the way down, and the front needs a space up of about, oh, maybe five or six millimeters and then I'll, I'll just run them there as far down as it'll go. So I'm definitely gonna need some kind of little rear bumper on there just to, just to fill this gap. So instead of using body mounts and doing all that, using all that excess and wasting them because I can use them somewhere else, what I'm going to do is I will get on the lathe and I will turn some aluminum posts, some six millimeter posts, with heads on them to go down through there. And then those will be retained with the screw pins so that that one will sit all the way down flush like that. And then the two for the front, I will make to raise it up to about like right there. Like I say, about five or six millimeters of vertical. I could, I suppose, just use washers. I have six millimeter washers, but uh, I will try to get these stepped to, to raise that up the amount that I would like it to be raised. Uh, then I can bolt these into the body and uh, we'll be good. I continue to have issues uh, filming, doing machine work. Uh, as I've mentioned in the past, uh, I don't write things down uh, very often. Uh, I just grab material and start attacking it. So the notion of setting up cameras to record me attacking material, like right here, you, you can't see anything. Um, so it's sped up a bit uh, to give me, st to still leave me enough time to talk about how bad I am at doing this. But roughing out the first part, if you're making, say, four parts, like what I'm doing right here, uh, roughing out that first part takes the most amount of time by far uh, because I do everything kind of manually. I call this my version of a human 3D printer where I, I know I need a part and I can knock it out in, I think in real time, this was about four minutes, uh, I unfortunately, when I calipered the depth, I got the depth all the way to the bottom of the tower and uh, there's a stop in the tower at 16 millimeters. So these were turned to 22 millimeters, which is the height of the, the, the hole from the top of the body mount hole to the 
chassis rail is 22 millimeters, but uh, turns out it's only 16 millimeters that I needed. So here's my exceptionally dirty method of parting something off. Because once, like I say, the first part is a prototype. So yeah, are there other ways to do that? Sure. Are there faster ways to do that? No. So here's some, uh, here's some, a little bit better of a camera placement on that cutter. I use, I think it's C2 carbide. This is an AR5 right hand. Uh, I turn metal almost exactly the same way I turn wood uh, and uh, 6061 aluminum, or as I call it, silver butter, basically turns like wood. So there's roughing out about half of the first one, but the other guy will talk more about it. All right, so I have the very rough stand-ins for the body mounts in place. It occurred to me I should uh, probably put the steering servo in there as we're getting pretty close to the height of it. Um, I mean, it definitely looks like it could go down lower now. That's why I, I rough them in and don't finish anything. Like, see, the height that you pick up real quick with these, like, I have them on Daphne and it raises the body. So, like, I have the, it done as low as it'll go. The shock towers cut through the body because they add, and she's not even using the regular Traxxas mount in the rear. We got this apparatus in the rear to get it down that low, and that was still coming up through. And then in the front, it's as, as low as I can possibly get it. I can't, I can't get it to go any lower than that. You know, I wish I could, but there we are. So back to this guy. The body now sits a little low in the nose, so I have, I turn these out with a tiny little bit of spacer there. So I think the front height is pretty good, so I will probably just reduce that down to maybe like the thickness of a washer. Because with this sitting directly on the towers, that seems, but I, I like to have some sort of physical stop so that when I drill the through holes for the retaining pins, these don't move or turn or wobble around. So I will get those down to maybe, I'll probably shoot for about a millimeter wide on those. Then all of this top portion is waste and will be turned off because I I was going to just retain them by putting a flange on top but with my knowledge of these I really want to use screws so these will be drilled and tapped for probably four millimeter because then that'll be easier to set them I just don't want to drill down too far to where the through hole goes through it but they're looking great so far I had forgotten how flimsy these are in the middle, I, I would actually not be opposed to like bolting a piece of strap, either cut a piece of aluminum or carbon or something and going, putting longer screws and going through there because, I don't know, it might not make a difference, but I mean, these, these are the things I think about. Like these go all the way down to where the physical stop is, the size reduces. They only need to go down Maybe have a quarter of an inch past that hole. They can go to right there. But I find they're they're much sturdier when when we go all the way in. So I will get these uh, reduced and turned down so that I can mount these guys on there and perhaps even tapped so that I can put the uh I mean I really wish they had an option of these that was just the small holes all the way around. I understand why they don't, but uh, you'll see here that they are definitely handed. The size that goes on the body, the the magnet is out in the open, and these have a little 
cradle so that when they snap together, it automatically aligns. I really like that. So it's not like you can mix and match. I have some extras of these, but they don't have the flange. And that flange really helps hold the body on when you like fall off of a rock. Daphne's body still pops off fairly regularly, but any body that doesn't have body pins on it is absolutely magic as far as I'm concerned. And if I'm gonna build this nutty guy, uh, might as well have it the way I want it. So I'll get, I'll get these finished up and uh, get those, fr the, the front height looks great. So I'll probably just turn those down and get those ready to be uh, drilled, tapped, bolted down. And uh, that'll probably do it for today once, once I get that done. So next time you see it, it'll be like the magic of video and uh, the body mounts will be on. So such is the way when making bespoke pieces uh, and never writing anything down, the rear, I think, is probably in its final configuration. I have them just hand tight. That's down to about a one millimeter spacer. Uh, I think that sits about perfectly. The height of the bed looks pretty good to me. I don't think I would actually want to go lower than that. Obviously, with body posts, I could get a little bit lower, another six, seven millimeters. But in the front, uh, I cut those, the the in the, the built-in spacers are six millimeters tall. Uh, they've got stacks of 0.1 millimeter shims under them to bring them up to seven millimeters. And even so, I feel like the front is still too low. So it definitely dives down toward the front. I think the front needs to be brought up realistically, maybe three or four millimeters. So that's enough variance that I will just go ahead and remake these a little longer so that I just have that amount of space in. Or potentially, while I'm remaking them, I can deal with the, what I'm seeing is the huge amount of flex in the mount. Like I said, I don't know if that's actually important, but uh, I have some three millimeter carbon and I can just trace the footprint of that and put it in between the, and then that would bring up, that's three millimeters. I might be able to just do that. I might just cut a piece of carbon to match that footprint, put it in under that to stiffen that. Uh, I can't do that in the rear, but the rear, I don't know why, but the rear seems much stiffer. It's the exact same thing, but there's no bow to it or anything. Uh, well, let's chalk that up to high quality uh, manufacturing of inexpensive parts. That's a big bow in it and I'm not comfortable with it. Anyway, that'll be, let's say a little bit for later. I dropped this body mount and now it's got all screws on it. So, I am that much closer. I don't know what I'm gonna do for bumpers. I did find that bumper, I believe it to be an SEX 10-3 front bumper. And even it does not sit in far enough in the front or in the rear. Uh, this, this body just barely, maybe about seven, eight millimeters in the front. And in the rear, it's kind of almost flush really when the body is set in place and a couple, couple millimeters maybe and pretty low so I don't know what bumper won't look odd with that but that will be for part two when I will get the transmission situated uh, I probably won't physically mount the body to the mounts until I have the links in place and the axle set because I do have a decent amount like that's all the way back against the bumper mount and that's not bad but you can tell it's a little farther back on the sliders so I kind of need to know that's all the way forward yeah I think it might be somewhere in between but I don't want to commit to where the body's sitting until I know where that front axle 
is going to, well, where I make that front axle fall. But it's kind of got to line up with the pan hard mount. So that is a pan hard mount for a Vanquish axle, and I'll be putting a TRX4 axle on there. So that's where it's going to get real interesting. As I said, a couple more days till I get the 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 servos for the for the diffs and the dig, and I haven't even considered. I, I probably won't be ordering the electronics for another week or so, but. As I've mentioned a couple times, uh, I've already had to fabricate some stuff. I'm probably going to have to make front and rear bumpers or maybe just look at what the VS410 origin, origin bumpers look like and perhaps go with those. I would actually maybe like something bespoke, so I might just get some bar stock going and make some very simple front and rear bumpers for this. Anyway... Uh, this video probably built up to be much longer uh, than I wanted it to be, seeing as this is just part one. I just kind of wanted to introduce it, and then the next thing I know, uh, I've got a chassis, uh, which if it had links, I, I would have a roller. So I feel like I'm already starting to go too fast, so we're going to pump the brakes on this one and uh, call it a day for this one. So thanks for uh, sticking with me. Um, hopefully... The other me has mentioned what I finally decided the name of this thing is going to be during one of the, the silent bits. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to drop a like. Uh, comment below if you've got any questions or suggestions. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. And uh, please do stay tuned for the next one because uh, I'll have more shenanigans on tap. Thanks.